So let's take a look at the half adder and the full adder. We are mainly interested in these two blocks as building blocks for larger adders. The half adder is a subcircuit which accepts two input bits. These are normally called A0 and B0 or A and B. Let's just call them A and B. And it produces two output bits, S and C out. S stands for sum because it, it's usually the sum bit and C out is the carry out from that bit position. The full adder, on the other hand, accepts three inputs, A, B, and C in, produces two outputs, S for sum and C out for carry out. So it produces the not same number of outputs as the half adder. The half adder is sometimes called a two to two compressor because it takes in two input bits and produces two output bits. It's not doing any compression, but we just call it a compressor because the FA, the full adder, is called a 3 to 2 compressor because it compresses 3 bits into 2 bits. Now, let's look at the truth table for the half adder. So, this is the truth table. It has two inputs, A and B, and two outputs, C out and S. There's a little bit of a trick here because this is actually uh, not a single truth table, there's two independent truth tables for two independent two input functions, C out and S. So in fact, we're looking at two gates, C out and S, each of which is independent from the, from the other. So if we go back and look at the half adder and the full adder, each of them will consist of two gates within, one for the sum and one for the carry out. So the number of CMOS gates that we have in any of our blocks is equal to the number of outputs that it produces, number of independent outputs at least, and so we have two independent outputs here. Because this is a two input function, a two input truth table, the, um, the functions for each of the outputs can be written pretty easily as uh, sum of min terms. So C out is equal to AB, and therefore the carry out is simply the ending of A and B, and the sum bit is uh, a bar b plus a b bar, which is simply a xor b. And therefore, the sum gate can be implemented using a two input xor, whereas uh, the uh, carry out gate can be implemented using a two input and. So if we use standard CMOS to implement each of these two functions, then um, we obtain the expression of C out bar as A bar plus B bar and implement the gate as a two input NOR gate. Uh, and as far as the two input XOR is concerned, again, we obtain the expression of S bar, which would give us A bar plus B into A plus B bar. So um, we can implement this expression or we can expand to get A bar b bar plus a b or we could have concluded that the two input xor when inverted would pr pr produce a two input xnor and just implemented this immediately now the only thing we have to notice here is that the sum gate is more complicated than the carry gate so if we calculate the uh, intrinsic time constant of the carry gate T carry out, tau carry out, actually, time constant. Um, and let's just assume that we are sizing for resistance equal to the unit inverter. So in this case, the time constant for pull up and pull down will be equal. And uh, we'll just have uh, a time constant which is equal to R0, C0, multiplied by the uh, amount of output capacitance that we observe, which is 6. So it's 6 R0, C0. And for the sum gate, again, we are assuming we are sizing for uh, resistance equal to the unit inverter. And we are assuming also that mu n is approximately equal to 2 mu p. Uh, so in this case, D 
the output capacitance we see at the output node is equal to uh, 4 plus 4 plus 2 plus 2. This is 12 R0 C0. So the time constant for the sum gate is double the time constant for the carry out gate. The three input uh, full adder is actually a much more important and much more interesting gate than the half adder because most of the bit positions we will be calculating for in adders as well as most of the building blocks we'll be using for multipliers will actually use full adders rather than half adders. Half adders are actually a lot more important in multipliers than they are in n bit adders. In any case, when we look at um, a three input full adder, what's happening here is that at each of these inputs, we are adding the three bits, A, B, and C in, and the output is just gonna be represented with S being the uh, lower or the less significant bit and C out being the more significant bit. So zero plus zero plus zero gives us zero, zero but 0 plus 0 plus 1 is going to give us 1, which is going to be 0, 1. So this is the second row here. Same applies for 0 plus 1 plus 0. However, 0 plus 1 plus 1 is going to give us 2, which is going to be represented with a 1 at the carry out position and a 0 in the sum position. A 1 plus 1 plus 1 is going to give us 1, 1. It's a 3. So we're going to have a 1 in the carry out position and a 1 in the sum position. Again, we can obtain expressions for uh, carry out and sum as uh, sum of products or sum of active min terms. And in fact, uh, it would be very easy to expand each of them as uh, just a sum of products, but it's, it's even more productive to uh, draw the min terms on a kernel map. So a kernel map will just show which of the min terms for each of these functions are active, producing a one. And this allows us to produce more simplified forms of each of these two expressions. So we're gonna uh, take this to be A, we're gonna take this range to be C in, and we are gonna take this range to be B. This allows us to keep C in as the least significant bit and therefore numbering the min terms from top to bottom, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We're going to go with the min terms 0, 1, skip 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And we're going to repeat this for the sum function as well. Now, looking at which min terms are active for carry out, we find that they are min terms 3, 5, 6, and 7. So 3, 5, 6, and 7. For the sum uh, output, on the other hand, the active min terms are 1, uh, 2, 4, uh, and uh, 7. So these are the active min terms for the sum output. And these are the active min terms for the carry out output. We find that in the sum output, we don't have any adjacent ones. This does not allow us to uh, um, cover any of the min terms with larger rectangles, meaning we cannot produce the sum expression any more uh, simplified than it would have been just to write it straight from the truth table, which means that the sum output at best is going to be expressed as a bar b bar c n, this is min term 1, plus uh, a bar plus a b bar c n bar, which is uh, min term um, 2, and uh, plus a bar b c in bar plus a b c in so this is the expression of s and it's the best we can do with carry out on the other hand we can cover some adjacent min terms with rectangles because we are in an eight rectangle cardinal map each two covered uh, adjacent min terms will produce a two variable product term and so c out can be actually represented as the sum of three two variable product terms. This product term, for example, will be Cn times B. So this is B times Cn. This product term is going to be A times Cn. And the last product term is B times Cn. 
So we have an expression for C output, and it's obviously sim much simpler than the expression of S. Now, if we go ahead and draw the, uh, um, the uh, standard CMOS implementations of the function S by taking the expression of S bar, and the function, uh, function C out by taking the expression of C out bar, the gates are going to be kind of large, and we actually showed these gates in an earlier video. But we can uh, kind of think about how the gates would look like without having to draw them. So if we obtain the expression of S bar, it's going to be, um, it's going to consist of four uh, sum terms multiplied by each other. So it's going to consist of a product of sums, and each of the uh, sums is going to be a sum of three uh, elements. And this is going to be the expression of S bar. What this tells me is that I'm going to have um, a block in the pull-down network looking like this, and this is going to be repeated four times on the way to ground. We're going to have the opposite in the pull-up network, meaning that we will have four branches, each consisting of three PMOS transistors on the way to VDD, and this is going to be repeated four times. So to size the PMOS transistors in the sum gate for um, resistance equal to the unit inverter, we have to size them as 666. And to size the NMOS transistors, we have to size them at, at 4, because there are 4 on the way to ground. Now, if we look at the output node, this output node is going to have a load capacitance equal to 4 times 3, accounting for the NMOS transistors, plus 6 times 4, accounting for the PMOS transistors C0. So this is 24 and this is 12, giving us a load capacitance of 36 C0. For an intrinsic time constant for sum equal to 36 uh, R0 C0. So the intrinsic time constant for the sum gate is 36 R0 C0. The expression of C out bar, on the other hand, is going to consist of three product of sum terms, each consisting of two uh, sum uh, variables. And therefore, we are going to have uh, a block consisting of two transistors in parallel, and this is repeated three times on the way to ground, meaning that we have three branches, each consisting of two PMOSs on the way to VDD. Sizing the PMOSs at four and the NMOS transistors at three guarantees that we have uh, we have um, resistance equal to the unit inverter. So load capacitance in this case is going to be 3 times 2 accounting for the NMOSs plus 4 times 3 accounting for the PMOSs C0. So this is going to be 12 plus 6 for 18 C0, giving us tau C out equals 18 R0 C0. So again, we find that the time constant for carry out is much smaller than the time constant for sum in the full adder as it was in the half adder. In fact, it's half. So the time constant for carry out is always half the time constant for sum. There is a caveat here because we are assuming that none of these gates are loaded. We are calculating the intrinsic time constant. Of course, these gates are going to be loaded. And as we see, loading on sum and carry is going to be very different. So perhaps we shouldn't be too quick to uh, assert that only the sum matters. In fact, when we look at n-bit adders, we will find that even though the sum gate itself might be a little bit more complicated, actually a lot more complicated than the carry gate, it is the carry that matters the most, because it is the carry that scales the delay of the adder the most.